So my name is Martin Holstey. I work at Trellix. I'm the, the CTO for cloud there. And it's been my privilege to work with Amazon uh, for about 10 years now uh, with Trellix. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Trellix is the combination of McAfee and FireEye come together to create a new company. And it's been really exciting to see all the, the new things that we're adding on top of uh, the other technologies that we brought together. Uh, we do a lot of different things. We do endpoint, we do email. Uh, but what I'm going to show you today is what happens when you put all that together in the same place. So for a long time, we've been talking about defense in depth, email, network, endpoint. You still need all that stuff. You wouldn't want to remove uh, any of those things, right? Uh, but what we're finding is that business goes far beyond those things. So we have to include a lot of others, like office, backup, mainframe, which we'll show in a little bit, uh, identity, storage, vul uh, vulnerability management, and of course, cloud. And so I call this defense in breadth. We, ha we have to look much wider in addition to the depth. So all this comes together in what, what I call a security factory. So you take cloud events, you put them in, you take SaaS events, you take the asset info for, for those, you put them all together in a factory, and out comes magic. Uh, so what do the rainbows and unicorns here actually mean? Uh, we, we are able to put all these together to get the context of what happens. And we'll dive into exactly what this looks like. So it's not just magic fluff. You're going to see uh, what we, we use. And at the end, we're going to go through exactly how we use AI to add assessments. And I think this is a very different story than you're going to hear throughout the rest of the expo on AI. Uh, this is not a chat bot. We're going to show you how analysts can actually use this stuff. So how do we get all this data? This talks about data gravity. And one of the most important things that the Security Lake announcement uh, has meant uh, with going GA this last week is that we now can get all of our data into the same place. Uh, so we have a great way to do that with a ton of different cloud connectors, uh, lots and lots of SaaS. But we also bring in all the Amazon data as well. Uh, we're one of very few that do both a source and subscriber integration with uh, Amazon Security Lake. So we have direct access to all the data that we need to tell these stories, uh, specifically on Amazon. And this is what it looks like when you get it right. You have all the data you need from anywhere. So basically, any SaaS you can think of, you can put it together with our native data that comes through something like Endpoint or EDR. You can put that together with all the data that's in Security Lake. And now you have all the data you need to tell that story, and you get that bi-directional feed from Security Lake in and out so that you can learn from that. Getting started is really easy. It takes, generally, if you have access to an, the, the API to generate an API key, you can set up an integration in 30 seconds. Uh, you click on which one you want, and then you drop in uh, the API key, and you're done. Uh, it's even easier with a lot of the cloud infrastructure we have now. It's two clicks to get Security Lake integrated. Uh, this has been a, a really big deal. And so what can we start to do with all this? Well, you can start to build trust around identities. Uh, so we'll, we take all the events in, and from all those events, we're able to extract usernames and hosts and start tracking them from that perspective. Uh, we're also able to hook directly into uh, things like Active Directory or other directories that you might have and pull those out. And what we could do with that is uh, find VIPs. And so we'll show exactly what that looks like here. Uh, we also integrate uh, really well with our partner Okta, so anytime you're uh, bringing that information in, you can do interesting things like find unknown users that are resetting passwords, how often do they do that, and we can start to see patterns that occur there. And when you have all the information, so you have Okta plus directory plus uh, network information, you start to get this telemetry that shows, uh, much like a ship at sea, is able to see from a lighthouse and some other landmarks really, truly where their, their, their position is, they don't have to guess what's actually happening because they have multiple sources of information around the same event, and that's a big deal. So for Okta, for example, uh, if, some, if an unauthorized user is able to steal a token through something like MFA fatigue or something like that, now we could track through all the things that are happening, and this becomes really important. And it's not just Okta. We're able to tell the complete story when you have all the data in one place. So each one of these uh, boxes here, you can think of these as an event stream. And so if you think of the top of that as like 6 a.m. and the bottom as 6 p.m., this is timeline in a day. And each one of these categories has a, a story to tell. And the, the job of an analyst is to figure out what this looks like across this timeline and across all these different data points. And so you start to get this constellation that's tied together through usernames, through email addresses, and you're able to trace what has occurred essentially at the same time 
uh, same point of time, but across all these different viewpoints. And so you could see how uh, a phishing email compromises a credential, which then creates a service account in O365, which then goes into uh, endpoint, and you're able to pull the endpoint telemetry out. Maybe you see what files are being accessed through the DLP. Then you see where they went on the network and how they were eventually able to ac access mainframe data. And this becomes really interesting. So we have a, a partnership with a great company called Bottomline. And I, I called out these two fields. Um, this is one of the, the, the coolest things I've seen in a long time, to be able to pull out the actual fields being uh, transferred in a mainframe. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have mainframes at work. If you do, uh, they are very hard to get telemetry out of. But now we can actually start to track who's transferring money inside of a mainframe and pull that all the way back to who got a phishing email. This is a big deal. Uh, so we have, for every source, a complete understanding of what's going on. With dashboards, we're able to show uh, graphically within uh, Trellix XDR exactly what this looks like. And we can do a lot with uh, cloud storage as well. So not, not just the telemetry, we have a lot of integrations for actually scanning that stuff. Uh, for those of you that remember uh, FireEye network products, we still have the network products, and we were made famous by our uh, many, many patented uh, sandbox technology. So we're still able to apply all of that uh, to cloud storage, which is a, a great way to, especially if you have like a, an M&A situation and you have a big pile of data and you want to scan that and make sure it's all safe. Uh, and we're able to uh, track all the asset info as it goes through. Uh, we have a great partnership with Tenable, so we can bring that data in. That's also bi-directional, so we can get assets that are managed by Tenable and uh, apply those to the event stream that's coming through. And then we can turn around and find uh, assets that Tenable doesn't know about and put them into uh, Tenable I.O. Uh, so that's another great partnership that we have. So the idea here is making sure that you can leverage all of the tools at your disposal and have all that data in one place. And so this gives us that full view. And so now we can start to look not just at events, but at entities, so users and hosts. And we can start to put, uh, we, we can detect which ones are VIPs based on their job profile and uh, adjust the risk scores. Okay, so this is the fun part. You've heard the, the term AI constantly uh, for months now, and especially at the conference. Uh, so what does that mean for us? Well, for the last eight years, we've done uh, something called investigative tips. The people that write the detection content for us also write the investigations that go with these rules in XDR. And so it's a series of questions. It's questions like, have there been any other uh, rule hits for this IP? Who's been logging in from this IP? And some other basics. And when you stack them all together, you start to paint that broad picture that I showed earlier. And so what we are doing now is automatically executing all of the questions that you might ask about this. And then we set it to AI. And we say, what if we collected all that information and then got the opinion of AI about, should we adjust the risk score of this? So uh, this is updated, actually. I'm very pleased to announce that we are now running our AI on SageMaker, which means all of the data stays local. We don't uh, have to send it to OpenAI. You don't have to bring an OpenAI key. I didn't get the, a chance to update this slide. Uh, but if you come by the booth, we can show you what this looks like. Uh, this is a really big deal. So this preview uh, keeps all the data in one place uh, to make these assessments. Uh, but essentially, we're taking all that centralized data putting it together, asking the right questions, and then finally asking the opinion of AI, saying, OK, so this rule said this. We were able to tell this story with the data. Do you think that the rule should be uh, higher or lower on the risk score? And the reason that this is so important is that those low-level alerts are the ones that you really need to find. The critical ones you're already going to see. But it's the low-level alerts uh, that are the ones that often go missing. And this is a way to find that. So what does this look like in there? Uh, we are able to use the AI to say, does, this, does the evidence that we have uh, support or reject this rule? And if so, we're able to find that low-level alert and raise it. Uh, so for those of you that remember the SolarWinds attack, uh, we were able to find that uh, using a, a very good uh, security operations center that had a, uh, the expertise to find that low-level alert that everybody else was missing. And they said, yeah, this one we need to pay attention to. And we were lucky because we had such talented folks. Uh, but this allows uh, you to, to scour for all of those low-level alerts. And even if you're not the, you know, a complete rock star analyst, uh, you're able to uh, find that stuff that you would have otherwise missed because it was marked as low. So for each thing that comes through, we're able to either support or reject it. And then just for fun, um, I, I worked in a SOC for I ran a SOC for most of a decade. For any of you that uh, have worked in a SOC, you know that sometimes it can be a bit of a grind. So for fun, uh, we also add 
which Star Wars villain best represents this alert, and uh, this has been a, a really popular feature that we added. Uh, so the severity rating of six, turns out the AI chooses Darth Maul for that because just enough to cause concern, um, but not that, that big a threat. Uh, we've seen uh, many different ones, and we're able to also uh, get remediation act actions out of this. So if, uh, we can get Sigma rules and things like that. Uh, we have a full security orchestration that works with this. Uh, so as, as things come through, we're able to uh, use that complete data story to figure out, okay, how bad is this thing? And even in some simple cases, uh, just based on that risk state. And so this is that story that now we can multiply with that AI. So the story is good to start with, but now we have uh, the AI that can tell, oh, yeah, this was a, a very high-risk asset as well. So that now that goes into the, the decision that it's making. Now, this is not going to take an automatic action. We're not in the position where we want to start disabling hosts based on what AI says. I don't, I don't think that's safe to do right now. However, it is very helpful to get its opinion on things because otherwise you would have missed it. And so being able to collect all that information, tell the whole story, and then get that, uh, suddenly you have a new risk score, a uh, severity rating of 8, and it's Darth Vader. And maybe it came in as a Jar Jar Binks. Uh, and this, as I mentioned earlier with the phishing, this is what this looks like when you're able to tie it all together. You're able to uh, quickly scope the incident because you have uh, the complete list of all the emails that have come through, and then you're able to tie that together with all the actions that happened in Office, and then able to uh, get that quick score from AI. So something that might reject that is if you had logins from a trusted IP that says, well, this doesn't really support the scenario that we just saw, so we're going to lower the risk rating on this. or but because we had three supporting ev uh, bits of evidence, we we're going to raise the risk score. In this case, uh, we had three in, in favor of supporting and one in favor of rejecting. So the AI says this should be severity rating of 10. This is an Emperor Palpatine. Uh, this is the, the worst case scenario. All right. Thank you. And uh, are there any questions from the audience?